David Lancashire is a highly awarded and distinguished Australian graphic designer. He made the trip to Australia as a £10 POM, a post-war scheme to attract English migrants under the populate or perish mantra. The only requirement was to stay for a period of two years, but David, like many of the £10-pounders, returned to England before deciding to return again as a boomerang POM. Now semi-retired in country Victoria, he has returned to his first love, painting. Now, David, you were one of the original 10 pound poms. 10 quid, yeah. 10 quid poms. What was it that made you come to Australia? Um, well, I was working in Manchester um, and my old mate, Chris Minton said, I'm thinking of going to uh, Australia and all you need is 10 quid. <laughs> the catch being called a pommy bastard all the time when I arrived here, because my accent was reeked north like that, you know, from Manchester. And they'd all say, piss off home, you bloody pommy bastard and all that. I was young and sort of, uh, it was a really, uh, the start of a journey that uh, has gone on since I've lived in, in, in this fantastic place. And then I, uh, I, I phoned up Art Associates, um, AA in the, in the telephone book at, uh, at Flinders Street Station. And they said, oh, come up, come up now. So I went up and believe it or not, I got a job that week. I started a couple of days later and I've never really looked back since then. So when you first got here, it would have been a bit easier perhaps for you assimilating into Australia because you, you were English, albeit from the North. Good question, because I've got to tell you, yeah, it, it's like if, if you're white, it's an open road. Nobody questions anything. What do you think the impact has been in Australia? I think it's been a plus. I think it's been absolutely amazing. I mean, the, the 10 quid POM doesn't happen anymore, but, um, and I don't know how quite uh, our immigration works now. Like, you know, you hear queue jumping when there's no queue. You, there's all this sort of uh, bureaucratic bullshit on sort of certain things. But by, by any standard, this country has, has benefited from the influx of a lot of different people. Um, and they, you know, the people that, you know, make Australia home. It sort of, they contribute. I've employed a lot of people from uh, different parts of the world uh, running a practice. I had 18 people in my design practice at one stage. Um, yeah, Australians, uh, Greeks, um, Italian, Chinese, China. Uh, Macedonians and the, the Macedonians got on well with the Greeks and so it's sort of uh, even in my small world we had um, we had a you know multi multi-racial sort of uh, existence. Even in a place like um, Colac and, and running into the western districts of Victoria do you see people from other parts of the world like Africans living here as well. Yeah, the Somalians, uh, there's quite a, a large community. When you get out into the country, it's sort of quite interesting. You'd expect cities to be like that. But the, the community around Birragurra and around Dean's Marsh, um, I think welcomes these people. I mean, obviously there's people with prejudice, but uh, that's normal. But there's also, they're family orientated and they really, uh, they, all they want is a job and to, to be constructive uh, to the community. Now that we're in 2018, where do you see multiculturalism taking Australia forward? There are more refugees in the world being created by war that we've created in a lot of ways. Um, that what a, we have to clean the mess up. We have to understand why this is happening. And I think that um, if any country's going to do it, Australia could do it if we had the right people uh, saying the right things. If you were bombed, uh, your house was bombed, your parents were killed, your aunties were killed, uh, would you want to stay there? I mean, you wouldn't. You'd try and go somewhere else. So you'd go across borders. Unfortunately, the, the numbers are so horrendous that even Europe can't handle it. Um, and consequently, you've got this really aggressive tone of sort of building, putting walls up. Are you, are you optimistic about the future of a, of a multicultural Australia? I, I have to be, yeah. I think I am. Uh, I believe that um, culture, different culture enriches your life. 
And if you turn away from that, then you're mad. You, it's like eating white bread all the time. Why would you want to do that? <laughs> One in four people in Australia were born somewhere else. They weren't born here. Mm. Do you see that increasing in time? And what sort of effect will that have? We have a political debate going raging, actually now, raging. As a country, I think we've lost that upper hand of human rights. Um, and that's unfortunate. So we are at a crossroads. And I think we need enlightened people in power to actually take the lead and do something about that. Is there one thing you'd like to see change in the way we look at our society today, our cultural diversity? Acceptance, I suppose, is one thing. Humility and also a sense of humour. If we don't have a sense of humour, we're buggered. What I'd like to see is um, uh, the acceptance of, um, of the way in which we, we treat people. And it's a two-way street, humility um, and, the, and the fact that we, we understand why we're different as long as everybody's got their arms around each other and are sort of uh, going in the same direction. Aboriginal mobs say, please walk with us. They don't say, we want all the country back. They say, please accept our culture and walk with us. Let's walk together. That to me is really important. Let's all walk together.